Welcome back to Grief Inspired. My name is Katherine McNulty, and today we're going to be talking about disenfranchised grief. So if it's a term that you've heard, but you're not really sure what it means, stick around because I'm gonna share that with you. Now, before we get started, I wanna remind you that my next upcoming grief course is about to start. And so I want to encourage you, if you are interested, to reach out to me at griefinspired at gmail.com. And I also want to remind you that I do have this grief journal that's available on Amazon. You can search under Catherine McNulty or you can search under a grief journal. Uh, you will find it there. Super, super helpful tool to get you started on the path to healing and finding your path to happiness after loss. Now here at Grief Inspired, what I want to do is bring you hope, hope for the heartbroken. If you have lost someone that you love, this is the place for you. I am going to help support you on the process, give you the education that you need to get through it, support you along the way, and give you other people that you can share your grief with. And that's so important for our term today, disenfranchised grief. So let's talk about disenfranchised grief. There are about 16 different types of grief that you can find when you look on the internet. You may have heard of anticipatory grief or complicated grief. Um, cumulative grief is another one. Well, disenfranchised grief is one that is relatively newer, not a lot of people talk about. So let's start with defining what it is. Um, first, if we define the term disenfranchised, because that's where I started, I had to go and say, okay, what does disenfranchised really mean? Disenfranchised means to deprive someone of their rights and privileges. So something that they should have is taken from them. They're deprived of that. When you, oftentimes the term is used in voting terms, right? You can say that the law disenfranchised over 3,000 voters because of this or that. Or you can talk about a measure will disenfranchise people from access to legal advice or support or something else. So when we talk about disenfranchised grief, we all know that grief is the emotional response to loss. So disenfranchised grief then means being deprived or taken away your right to grieve in the way that you should. And so there's a formal definition here um, that I found that says when your grieving doesn't fit in with the larger society's attitudes about dealing with death and loss. So you individually can feel disenfranchised based on society. You can feel disenfranchised based on just the community that you live in. Maybe it's just even with your family. Um, but you can have the experience of disenfranchised grief. If you are feeling disenfranchised, it's because you're not given the space and the right to grieve the way you feel that you should. Right? So it's it's feeling as if you're not being validated, um, if people are being dismissive of your grief, um, if you feel like you're being deprived, you're like, why is everybody telling me just to move on? Have you heard that one before? Or not giving me the space and telling me to, to get over it. Um, a lot of people hear that, right? When we, in our careers, right? Most um, corporations give you three days bereavement leave. Right, as if you're as if your grief is supposed to be over as those three days, and so sometimes that can seem hurtful for people. And it's like, well, why don't I have a right to grieve more? Why doesn't my organization? Um, why do they complain about my performance? Why do they not cut me a break? Right, I've lost my spouse, my child, my partner, my parent. Um, so all of those things are. Um, it's really about how how you're feeling. Um, but the term then is just disenfranchised grief. And it was coined by a man named Ken Doka. Uh, he's a professor and I'm going to get this right. He was vice president or is vice president of grief programs for the Hospice Foundation of America. So you can find his articles on psychology today. He's been in the grief space for a very long time. 
Um, he supports people through grief and then also teaches um, as a professor uh, to students. Um, so he's really professing uh, what grief is and how it shows up for people. I think that a lot of us can feel disenfranchised in our grief. And so I wanna ask you today, uh, are there places in your life or during your grief process when you feel or have felt disenfranchised, where you feel like you've been deprived of your right to grieve the way you feel you need to grieve or feel like your grief is not validated? Um, let me know. Drop a comment below and let me know if that's how you're feeling because my experience with talking to all of the people that I do is that lots of people feel disenfranchised. Um, and so I like the term because it gives us a, it gives us a place and a way, uh, language to talk about it specifically. So when we're talking about, let's, let's think of different scenarios. Oftentimes, um, it can be when you feel deprived and validated or discounted with your grief because someone overdosed. Well, technically they did it to themselves is what people will say. Um, or died by suicide, right? Sometimes people don't get enough space to grieve. Well, because again, because they, they chose to take their life. So as if you should grieve less, but that's the way society, right? And oftentimes culture, um, and there are differences between cultures and how people grieve and what's allowed and what's expected. So if you are in a different culture, um, please share that with me because I think that's that's an interesting thing to bring to this conversation. Um, one that's really good that, that I didn't personally think about is an ex-spouse, right? So if your ex-spouse dies, do you have the right, the privilege to grieve? Um, I would say yes all day long, but society often um, doesn't create space for that just because you're divorced um, as if somehow divorcing someone means, you know, you don't care about them anymore. Um, I'm personally divorced and I don't, I don't know that that can actually happen. I think that there's always part, um, no matter what the situation was um, with the divorce, how uh, difficult or challenging it might be when you come out of it, um, it is someone that you have married um, and so divorce um, can very much cause disenfranchised grief. People don't give us space to grieve there. Um, maybe someone who wasn't had the best character, maybe did something wrong, um, was imprisoned. Um, but again, even if it's a child of a mother, whether it was the worst criminal in the world, um, that person is still, that mother is still going to grieve. Um, a big one that comes up, and if you're thinking of this, write it down below, but miscarriage. Lots of people discount miscarriage as not being grief. Well, well, at least you can get pregnant, people say. Or, well, the baby was so young, it wouldn't have been viable anyways. Or, um, you know, people say things. Um, and, or people who don't understand. If you have not lost a child to miscarriage, it might be difficult to put yourself in someone else's situation and say, well, I don't understand that grief. And so that can create this disenfranchised grief. A lot of people don't understand grief. I think that's worth noting. Um, or the magnitude of grief that you're experiencing. Uh, until it happens to them, I've often had uh, clients who feel um, guilty because they say, you know, I didn't understand grief until it happened to me. And they feel guilty because they didn't support other people who went through grief before them in the way they feel like they should, right? Because grief teaches us so much. Um, but if people don't know, you can't necessarily fault them. But that's why I do these videos is because I want to help spread the word, right? Help you know that your grief is normal. The things that you're going through, you deserve to be validated in your pain, in your grief, in the sorrow in the, the lack of knowing what's gonna come next in your life because so much of our life changes, right? We often have to redefine our, our entire identity because our, our identity shifts with the loss of the people who are closest to us. 
So these are all things that are really important. And then again, I mentioned divorce a little bit earlier, but I think it's useful um, to, to mention that with disenfranchised grief, it doesn't have to be necessarily only with death. Um, it can be loss of a job and feeling, even though like I recently was let go from my job and even though I was kind of happy to leave and, and I kind of feel like they did me a favor, there's still grief there. There's loss there. Um, people who have a traumatic a brain injury, they used to be one way and now because of the brain injury, they're another. And so there's grief around that. Um, if you have something relating to your health, if you are one day you're healthy and the next day you go to the doctor and they tell you you have cancer, you grieve the health that you once had. You grieve your life the way it used to be. So those things are all disenfranchised grief. So I want you to share with me if this is something that you experience um, and it's really, honestly, one of the things that, that when, a, when people come to me, right, the biggest thing, the biggest challenge that most people have is they feel so alone in their grief. We feel disenfranchised. We feel like no one else gets us. No one understands. And we start to blame ourselves and say, maybe there's something wrong with me, which is totally not the case. You're grieving. Um, so I don't want anyone to feel disenfranchised. It's part of the reason why I do these videos. It's the reason why, you know, I make this grief journal so that you can, you can understand that your grief is normal. Like you're not wrong for grieving. And then we do the grief courses to give you a community of people where you can share what's going on with your grief so that you don't have to be lonely, so that you don't have to do it alone, where you can you can validate your grief. And you sit in a space with other people, right? We tend to compare our grief. Um, there is no real comparison, but we do it because it's human nature. And when you're sitting and you're in your grief, and then you see someone else who maybe you perceive as having a larger or more traumatic grief, you kind of say, well, at least, like I'm, I'm over here and I'm doing not so great, but oh my gosh, I can't imagine what would happen if I were in that person's shoes. Held my son as he passed away. Devastating for me, right? And I've had 12 years to work on it and talk about it and heal from it. And it's why I do what I do, but it, it almost helps other people because they say, well, wow, I couldn't imagine that. That seems like a worse loss. So if you can sit in a space where you feel like someone else might have a worse loss, it can make us feel a little bit better because it, it normalizes it for us. It validates our own grief. And when we can hear the guilt that other people are going through and the reactions that they're having, and when you can hear, like it's why I share openly how angry I wasn't my grief, right? I was angry at people who could get pregnant after my miscarriage. It's validating our feelings and we all need to be validated. And so coining the term disfranchised grief helps us do that. So I wanna thank Ken Doka for doing that because up until he coined the term, there wasn't really a good way to talk about it. Uh, and I think it's very real. Uh, it's real, uh, but it's not an excuse. Right? It's not an excuse to say, well, I'm disenfranchised, so I'm just a victim and I'm just going to give up. Please don't let it be that for you. But when you can label it and you can say, yes, I am disenfranchised. I am experiencing disenfranchised grief. My grief is not validated. I feel like I'm being deprived of my right to grieve. I don't have a space to grieve. Those are all very important and we need to communicate about that. And then we need to get together, you and I, and you and the other people in my course, and we need to work through it. So I do want to invite you to my course. Yes, I am shameless in talking about my grief journal and my course because I've seen how much it helps. And so if you are considering being part of my grief course, reach out to me today, right now at griefinspired at gmail.com and let's start talking. And for those of you who have already enrolled in my grief courses, thank you for being here. Please share that 
so other people will know uh, that it's that it's that it's a good place for them, right? I can say it all day long, but hearing it from you, if you've been through my courses, is really really valuable. Um, so again, we are all in this together. We are all grieving, and we can all get through this. There is hope, and you can find your path to happiness after loss. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now, and we'll see you in the next video.